A very good evening to everyone. Welcome to Global Online. Uh, here we are back with our UGC Net Paper One preparation for twenty twenty two batch, and we have the lectures live from Monday to Saturday at nine pm. I hope everything is clearly audible so that we can start the session for the day. So this is the lecture two for the new unit which we have started, and the unit is communication. and in today's lecture we are going to talk about uh, the models as well as uh, effective communication now if you remember yesterday i have told you that i'll be taking the models of communication but not all the models at a once we will be doing uh, every day few few models so that by the end of the uh, unit we can complete all the modules and you will understand every module in detail okay yes so let's quickly have a look at uh, what exactly global online is for so global online first of all uh, we have uh, started with a global online app we, you can go at google play store and you can download the app you can register yourself with your contact details and then you are free to assess the things now exactly what will be provided as a part of our product so 100 plus live lectures we have video lectures notes in the form of pdf which definitely which will help you to understand the concept first and then go for your practice sessions in the form of mcqs or previous year question papers which will be again in the form of solved question papers which will help you to understand the exact um, answer for the given question mock test uh, this will be com conducted after completion of the syllabus wherein again more than 2500 mcqs we will be completing if you have any any doubt or any concern you can please uh, get in touch with the given number we are starting with the next batch wherein we will most probably uh, start with again new unit that is 23rd of feb before that if you want to enroll you will be getting a discount of 20% on the fees so if you are interested you can go ahead with this So yes now let's start the session for the day we have started this uh, concept from yesterday uh, you know that this particular unit also has five questions and total marks are 10 so i definitely i won't say that you know here the questions are very easy uh, in this last two three cycles even the communication questions are little bit you know new concepts especially models they have started including so you have to little bit alert but it i'm saying that if you practice very well this particular unit you can keep a score of you know 10 on 10 so that is little efforts here a straight efforts and you can get the uh, you can score well at the same time let's quickly have a look at the syllabus the syllabus looks very compact but there are certain things which are in detail so we have yesterday yesterday we have completed this particular first sub point that is communication today we are going to talk about effective communication but along with effective communication we are going to talk about a uh, few models so i have taken two models today as i said every day i'll be taking few models and i'll complete the models of communication also well so now the start of the lecture we will start with the models and once we complete the models we will go with the effective communication part wherein we will see verbal and non verbal communication we will see intercultural group communication and classroom communication okay yes good evening to everyone i hope those who have joined they know that today's topic is effective communication and two models of communication so let's start the session for the day uh now models of communication i keep on saying this maybe one or twice lecture i must have skipped it but uh, it's a request to everyone please make handy notes we will give you the notes you are having ample amount of uh, sources to get the notes but it's not easy to revise all the notes all the 10 units of your paper 1 and paper 2 uh, just in in a span of one day before your exam it will make you go crazy so it is very very important that you need to have handy notes so whatever whatever topics i'm taking on daily basis i always suggest the students to sit with your notepad a proper notepad not pieces of paper which you know it's here and there at the end of the day a one book where you can detail or load down all the things and that can become your habit and during the examination even if you revise that it's much more than enough okay so yes let's start with the first model of communication that is aristotle's model of communication now this is a diagrammatic presentation i have written all the points we will go through all the points first we will just have a look at the diagram so we have the first model of communication that is aristotle model which talks about speaker 
which includes the element as speech audience okay effect and the occasion on when uh, occasion or the moment when the things happen so exactly what is this diagrammatic presentation and how to understand this model let's go one by one with the help of certain points uh, i'll come back to this diagram but still before i go ahead i just want you to keep the diagram in mind that is aristotle model which starts or initiates with speaker which has a next element that is speech next is the audience and the effect now yes let's start now uh yes so first of all aristotle model of communication was aristotle was the first to take initiative and design the communication model now how this communication model works or what exactly the communication model has to tell so let's understand so according to this model now i have highlighted the important elements okay so according to this model the speaker plays a key role in communication so please now i'm reading very slowly i'm going through each and every point because question comes you know in any form so you should know in and out about the model so here who plays an important role is the speaker he is the one who com takes complete charge of communication it means you can tell that the main the main role is played by speaker and that's how the communication model starts of aristotle the sender first prepares a content which he does carefully by putting his thoughts in words that is encoding we have studied it very well yesterday with an objective of influencing now this is the main intention of this model which an ob with an objective of influencing the listeners or the receptors so this is i mean to say you can get a question what is the aim what is the purpose of the model so basically aristotle model works with influencing the listeners or it it is to have impact on the listeners who would then respond in the sender's desired way now no points in guessing that the content has to be very very impressive now see linked it no need to by heart it anything or no need to you know put any rote form of learning in your mind in order to influence the listeners obviously the speaker is going to speak so when the speaker is speaking it he is using what a content and this content has to be very impressive in order to influence the listeners now it's 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 basic thing like for example you may be you may be listening to so many people you may be listening to so many things okay but certain certain thing charms you certain thing doesn't certain certain things creates an interest which you want to listen again and again and certain thing does not so what is that which makes or which distinguish one from another other is the content or the delivery also so here yes the content has to be very impressive uh, in this model for the audience or the receivers to get convinced so see listeners audience receivers these are the different names they have given okay the model says that the speaker communicates in such a way that the listener gets influence and respond accordingly so it the it means that this model is uh it's basically made in such a way that the speaker has to communicate communicate so that the listener gets influence and respond so that much amount of pressure you can say is there on the speaker that there has to be influencing going on and for that he has to be very very impressive with his um content now the speaker must be very careful about selection of his words and content in this model so you see now this is a fifth point but every point talks about what the speaker and the content the speaker and the content now he should understand his target audience exactly whom he is going to talk to and then prepare his speech so it means that the model also tells you that without knowing your target audience so the speaker if he does not know the target audience in this aristotle model he will not be able to deliver what is expected that is influencing quality because he doesn't know whom he is going to speak so it's very very important his uh, the speech should be in such a way that it should have or it should aware of the target audience making eye contact with the second party is again a must to create an impact among the listeners so yes uh, i mean to say the secondary part of this particular model is making a eye contact which shows the confidence level in the speaker through his speech now now this is this point number 6 and 7 where are very very important i in fact i have highlighted the whole point 7 some questions can be build up from here 
So the Aristotle model of communication is widely accepted and most common model of communication where this the sender sends the information or a message to the receiver to influence them and make them act respond act accordingly so the intention of this model is that uh vikram just a minute i'll come back to your doubt i'll just complete this part and then i'll come to you so the model tells that uh, sorry this model of communication tells that the the message or the information is basically made or delivered in order to create an influence so that accordingly the uh, listeners the audience should react okay now the last point is very 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 impo important aristotle model of communication is a golden rule to excel in public speaking seminars lectures where the sender makes his point clear by designing an impressive content passing on the message to the second part that is party you can say and then simply uh, respond make them respond accordingly here the sender is active member and the receiver is passive one so like for example like you know uh, specially you know uh, this it is i mean to say the golden rule is public speaking seminar lectures so when you want to attract the customers towards you in the form of anyone i mean this is students you say or you can say uh, the business the investors the financial companies whoever you are communicating with so they this lectures are delivered in such a way with a such a personality that the personality has a strong convincing power yes this should happen or this should come or this should you know this should definitely this is the best way and you know automatically the people get attracted and that's what the people has to be attracted now attracted it means the people has to turn into the clients the customers you know the people who are coming should turn into the clients and that's how this complete model is based on so now before we uh, you know before we go ahead we will just once again revise what we did we started with aristotle model of communication now this model of communication basically has the following elements that is the speaker who has to you know speak give the speech with the impressive content so that the target audiences are influenced and the effect is that the target audience has to act accordingly the way the speaker wants okay that is the effect now we have seen that speaker plays an important role his content has to be very powerful so that it has an objective of influencing the listeners the recipients the audiences and the words has to be selected very well the words has to be very well selected so that it leaves an impression now speaker has to ensure that the target audiences are you know uh, known and that's how his speech should be uh, prepared making an eye contact is also important and yes so it it summarizes that the information or a message which is passed in with the help of aristotle model of communication it is basically to influence and to make the respondent act so from this we can generalize that this model of communication is a golden rule especially in public speaking seminars lectures where the send up make his point very clearly by an in an impressive way with the help of the content so that the party that is the second party can simply or can accordingly act and he has he, hence we can conclude that sender is an active member and receiver is the passive one okay i hope very you don't have to see only few points don't have to mug up you just have to understand the model and keep it in your mind so when you're revising you should know what aristotle mod aristotle model spoke about it spoke about four elements what are they speaker speech audience target audience and your effect so the speaker has to speak very efficiently with the with understanding who is the target audience and ensuring that the target audience should be influenced in order to act accordingly that is the aristotle model and where it works or where it is in indicated as a golden rule fine yes now uh, yeah good evening all those i hope for those who are late i have revised the model for them uh, vikrant when you went to write the notes i meaning running class it is better to write the notes always in the running class so like for example i'll give you an example see now the example changes with the 
content but like so like for example Aristotle uh, Aristotle model I am talking so first thing should be a diagram with the help of the diagram itself you can write so speaker is the one who initiates who plays an important role so here you can with the wherever you have made a diagram write it very clearly he plays a key role or important role okay and his speech has to be very impressive by knowing the target audience content should be impressive or you can write content should be impressive the way you understand target audience should be influenced okay and effect should be target audience should act accordingly so with the help of these points simple points your model is clear but yes at the end you can write somewhere you can create a space this model is a golden rule for what so examples because you may get the question in the form of examples so like public speaking lectures seminars uh, at this places this model works out best and yes what is the final conclusion of the model the speaker is the sender is the active person and the audience is the passive uh, one is it clear i've explained it very well now i hope we can move ahead all those who have joined late also for them two three times i have revised okay now let's start with the second model of the day so the second model i have taken is last wells model of communication yes here also we have a diagrammatic presentation that is the communicator which indicates who message says what means what exactly want to be what is to be said uh Ashwini I have already blocked so we don't get it on the channel I have already blocked it so can you uh, also blocked it from your end you will not get the message because see I have blocked it I am not getting any message at all and the person may be you know if you get distracted the person enjoys so he will keep on putting more so block it and ignore it okay now uh, medium that is in which channel through where it is passed to whom that is the receiver okay and effect with what effect now let's let's go understand it when by when this is just a diagrammatic presentation i with the help of diagrammatic presentation let's let's uh, neelam we uh, actually we have taken action against it so we do not get the message we have already blocked so now because you people have not blocked you must be getting those messages okay fine so now let's understand because with the help of uh, diagram it's not very clear so let's understand very clearly this particular model so yes so harold laswell's model which was uh, which came out in 1948 now here laswell presented a strictly verbal model with the form of questions so what were the questions that is who says what in which channel to whom with what effect so these were the five questions which were put by the model so let's see how this model actually or what exactly this uh, five components or five elements talk about so the model briefly and clearly introduces several highly significant variables in the communication process and what what are those variables that is first is identification of source now this please i have already bolded so that you please remember it very well the question can be emphasized on this so identification of source it means from where the source is coming who in the form of who so instead of uh, who we have we, we call it as what identification of a source then what so says what it means analysis of analysis of message or the content which a source want to tell or want to convey or want to inform choice of channel that is when we talk about which channel so here is a choice is given a choice has to be made then to whom so whom it means the characteristics of audience so you can also tell who is the target audience whom for whom you are conveying the messages or whom you want to convey the message and lastly the effect it means the evaluation of exactly what has been communicated to evaluate how the message has been interpreted or understood so these are the five basic components so again i'll repeat i'll just clear the ink from the uh, slide so that you can understand it very well so these are the five components okay so when i say who it indicates identification of source when i say says what it indicates the message analysis of message in which channel it indicates the choice of channel when i took to whom so it indicates the characteristics okay 
and if i talk with what effect it indicates what it indicates evaluation of the message it means to evaluate the effect of the message okay are the five basic components of what are the five basic components of communication process given by harold that is laswell's model so this you have to keep in mind now it is the effect now see this is this has this is the only important part in this model because the model is very small to understand it is the effect that model emphasizes the most it means that in laswell's model what is that part which is given more weightage that is nothing but it is called as effect so effect implies an observable and measurable change in the receiver that is caused by identifiable elements in the process change is one of these elements which will lead to change the effect it means that exactly what see here it is written very well that is observable and measurable change in receiver that is caused only after getting the message so like for example when the source okay conveys the message with the help of any of the selected channel and when it comes to the audience okay so what observation the audience or the person you can say the the one who has received the message the recipient the audience you can use any word so what is exactly observed what is exactly measured that is much more given weightage in this particular model that is in laswell's model so in laswell's model the person who receives the message and with what effect means when he evaluates okay what was exactly to be communicated or what has to be understood so on that if the whole communication model depends so more importance is given to what more importance is importance is given to the effect is it clear so now please remember aristotle model talks about what it talks about active and passive member and influencing whereas Laswell's model talks about five components and the very important component is that is the effect okay so these two models for the day i have taken only these two models and uh, tomorrow again i'll be adding two or maybe if it is easy i can take the third model also fine so let's now let's go ahead with effective communication part so here our models are ending i'm no i have not completed all the models i have just completed two models there are more 6 to 7 models which i have to complete which i'll take on daily basis fine so now let's start with our effective communication topic so first first let's understand a few simple things which are uh, yesterday i couldn't take so con connotation and denotation yes you get a question on this in 2000s 2019 i have seen questions on this so first of all when we talk about connotation it is nothing but it is you know it's refer to the personal and cultural meaning okay where i have given an example but first let's understand the uh, meaning of the term so it's it's nothing but the cultural and the personal meaning in addition to the primary or the literal meaning of the word so when we take denotation it refers to the dictionary meaning so dictionary meaning like for example i have taken the color yes vikrant i said there are different models every day i'll be taking the models i know that newcom model is there then we uh, we have berlo's model also so two two models or three three models we are going to do okay fine i know there was a question on newcom model okay so when we talk about denotation that is color the the word or the meaning of the color blue here is blue is the color whereas in it in connotation it talks about the personal and cultural feeling which can indicate or feelingness of you know feeling sad so that can be attributed as what a cultural meaning or a personal meaning so connotation can be classified as positive and negative you can take it the way it is you know presented it can be in the positive form also it can be in negative form also but in denotation there is no such classification it ha only has a proper dictionary meaning okay there is no positive or no negative it is only uh, in connotation connotation can change according to the culture and personal experience yes what is what what is there in one culture or in with one person definitely it can differ with another whereas denotation remains the same regardless of culture or you know the personal experience so it, it is not going to change it is the primary meaning or the literally meaning which is attributed to a particular word 
is it clear okay so you can get a sentences or you can get any example and they will tell you to find the connotation or denotation form of the same fine now yes so let's move ahead now uh yes now zone of proximal development the reason to bring here because there were two topics on which this question was also formed so i've taken that words also scaffolding uh, because this was in there in previous year question paper so first let's understand the concept let's understand the meaning and then let's understand some extra points also okay so yes this topic was there in your previous year question paper uh, so you should little bit focus it and understand so what is this zone of proximal development now this zone of proximal development was given by lee witgosi so exactly what it means it tells you that your i mean to say it's about learner it can be attached with uh, your teaching aptitude also so exactly what is already known by the learner or what learner already knows okay and what learner does not know so there is a distinguish between what a learner knows and what a learner does not know but at the same time there are, there is an intersection with what can be known with the help of assistance now this assistance can be provided by the teachers or this assistance can be provided by the peer group also okay so now this assistance is nothing but the intersection which we called as nothing but the zone of proximal development it was one of the key construct given by the theor uh, witgosi theory of learning and development so the zone of proximal development now listen very carefully this is very important for you is known as a space okay so this is the zone so this particular this is the space where i have circled this so this particular space as a space between what a learner can do without assistance and when a can what a learner can do with guidance or in collaboration with his capable peers so when we talk about uh shreya just a minute your message I, i'll read i let me first complete this concept i'll come to your message also okay let me first complete this part if i leave in between you some students get distracted okay so yes so when we talk about the space between what a learner can do without assistance and what a learner can do with the guidance or collaboration with his peers so see adult guidance so i said teachers and peer with peer groups it means the classmates so like for example certain things a learner and i'll explain this in easy term a learner know certain things and he does not know certain things but there are there are chances or uh, there, you can say that there are things with which with the assistant a learner can do so it means a space where a learner can understand or a learner can learn with the help of someone okay now this someone can be teacher or the someone can be the peer group so this particular part or this particular space is called as what it's called as zone of proximal development okay is it clear now there are some words under this deepa krishnan space of proximal development okay shreya what is your doubt there should no so any difference between english and hindi content ha huh, there is no such the only thing is that you have in hindi you may have a specific term for specific thing otherwise there is as such there is no difference your understanding is Im important to write the answers even if you are hard attempting in hindi okay only certain terminologies which is very specific okay that is the only thing which we can talk about Uh, no 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 deepa uh, you are just it's not about training don't complicate it okay it's not about training like for example i'll just make it simple see that your second sentence no has complicated forget about this thing okay like for example if i am a learner okay just uh, let us let us assume that i am a learner or you are a learner now you know certain things okay certain things are very clear to you which i have shaded but certain things you do not know so it does not talks about exactly training or something but just little bit of guidance see training it means you know you have you are confined to a period or you are confined to a 
particular time duration so it is not just a small help of mine or a small assistance of mine you know you can uh, know the things so it is not about a training or it is not about exactly something the, um, coaching you mentoring you my small amount of explanation also will help you to understand that thing and that thing which you understand is nothing but that is called as zone of proximal development proximal development it means with the help of someone you could uh, get the concept okay like i'll give you an example yes i'll give you an example let us take an example i'll give a proper example now okay a maths uh, sum has been taught in the class okay a mathematical sum has been taught in the class which you people also may be doing a group studies so when it was taught in the class you do not know it you know the basic mathematics so what you already know the basic mathematics which is used but you do not know how to derived or how to come to that particular part of answer so when you are doing the group studies your friends are explaining you and then you understand it very clearly so when you understand understand it clearly because of your friends explanation that understanding part is called as what zone of proximal development is it clear now i made it very simple uh yes i uh, moment i'll come to that uh, topic also uh, let, let's first complete this this also half i'll leave so it's better it will be lead to more confusion i hope zone of proximal development very easy example i gave so it's not about any training or performance evaluation you just understood a concept with the help of someone so that someone can be suppose i am a teacher i took you i take took an extra class or i sat with you separately in order to make you understand or when you are doing the group studies with the help of your friends you understood it so that understanding phase is called as zone of proximal development because with the help of someone you understood is it clear very simple don't complicate it uh. i have seen students got confused there is no need to get so much complicated okay now so now uh, scaffolding so basically what is scaffolding and how is relate it related to this so scaffolding consists of the activities which are provided by the educator or more competent peer it means the people who are competent a little bit scholarly we can say to support the student as he or she is led through the zone of proximal development see like for example now how this is done scaffolding like for example um in in india actually we do not have this much importance of this but uh, in in certain boards i mean to say in ig board cbse boards you have some teachers called as assistant teacher okay uh, assistant teacher so assistant teacher is the one who who is like a shadow teacher we call it as a sh shadow teacher also okay now shadow teacher can help you know uh, will provide you an extra assistance in order to cover up one subject same thing can be done like for example if i'm creating a group of five students in that five students i will put two students who are little bit lower and three are little bit uh, means higher okay and these three students is given the responsibility to develop this two students so that is scaffolding so that is scaffolding is nothing but we provide the scaffolding with the help of zone of proximal development in group under the guidance of friend in the friendly environment the learning becomes easier yes so that's what you i said example is group studies okay i f i hope it is very uh, very clear with everyone support is tapered off that is withdrawn now see now scaffolding no like for example at construction sites you do the scaffolding okay now uh, support i mean to say we will support the student or we will the sh shadow teacher will support the student and slowly slowly it will be tapered off it means it will be withdrawn as it becomes unnecessary much of scaffold is removed like for example here i have given the building example of building construction the student then will be able to complete the task again on his own so like if you, you should not give it till the end because then the student becomes dependent you have to make student inter means self dependent so you have to start understanding you know when to leave the support a small very small example let us take an example when we learn to ride a bicycle okay our parents always supported when we started to take our first step and you know they understood when to hold our hands very tightly and when to withdraw the support and that that is when they were holding our hands and when we were walking with that support that space was called as zone of proximal development and when they knew when to withdraw so that we know we could walk on our own and we could uh, take the step on our own 
so that is how the scap uh, zone of proximal development develops i hope it is very clear very simple examples but now you should be very clear what is zone of prox proximal development okay now how it is coined with the role of teacher that also we will see so vitugosi coined a definition of instructional scaffolding okay instructional scaffolding it means where the teacher played an important role he defined this the role of teacher and others in supporting the learner development and providing support structure to get to that next stage or level so teacher also provides scaffolding to the learners the only with an intention that a learner gets to next level so when the learner i mean to say like for example when the learner learns how to do the thing teacher should immediately withdraw like for example i told you in with in a uh, uh, reflective learning also teacher should just just initiate and then should take a back step so that the pro, the student know how to go for an analytical ability of learning okay so zone of proximal development is defined as a range of tasks that a child can perform with the help and guidance of others but cannot yet perform independently so scaffolding is directly related to zone of proximal development in that it is the support mechanism now please remember instead of scaffolding you can get the word as support mechanism that helps the learner successfully perform a task within his or her zone of proximal development so you should remember this word scaffolding how does it helps in teaching or how does it plays a role in teaching and what is an another word for that that is called a support mechanism now all the students who are present over here are clear with this are clear with what is zone of pro, zone of proximal development are clear with scaffolding and are clear with support mechanism is it clear so one student was having a doubt i'll just quickly come to his doubt and then we will go ahead okay now yes mohammed just see there are two things that is connotation and denotation so whenever i am giving okay if it is little bit difficult so denotation it means a definition wise okay or which is defined so definition definitely we cannot change the definition definition will be definition whether it it is given in the in any form okay so definition meaning is called as denotation whereas a cultural or a personal meaning to the word is called as connotation now how the question comes in the so in the examination is seen so they will give you like the term like for example a term will be given like if i use the word he was you know he was beaten till the time he was blue and black so now blue and black beating and blue and black is definitely not related to denotation it's blue color we know color blue is uh, the meaning actual meaning but this example is nothing but it is related to what the cultural and a personal meaning so this is an example of connotation denotation is only and only restricted to your uh meaning of what your meaning of your dictionary or you like for example a definition now here when i said negative and positive like for example blue ocean so like for example blue waves so it it gives peace okay but at the same time uh, it also can you know uh, sadness so now you will get a sentence whether how it is whether it is positive or negative they will clearly define you in sentence so with the help of an example you can understand that there are positive feelings attached it is called as positive connotation a negative meaning attached it's called as negative connotation but it can be positive also it can be now red like it's it's a symbol of love also and red is a symbol of danger also so it is positive also and it is negative also how it is expressed with the help of statement you will understand you will, should find out whether it is positive or negative i hope it is very clear okay you have understood the meaning very well fine so i hope this is very clear zone of proximal development is also clear so you uh, there is one question definitely so when when the question will come in case if you forget i will just brush up when we take mcqs okay now yes so now let's come to next part that is verbal and non verbal communication so when we uh, when we talk about verbal communication it's a process of communication through words okay verbal which we are verbally when we say non verbal it is without words so what you make with any any i mean to say gestures uh, silence your facial expressions whenever you used without telling anything it's 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 a form of what it's a form of non verbal communication 
so form degree of formality so degree of formality is more than non verbal because you know this is the most accepted form okay whereas it is less formal uh, in fact uh, sorry in fact in case of non verbal communication no formality is maintained yesterday also i gave you an example of non formal they you don't have to maintain any formality it is just a casual way of communicating uh it, it it has leg legal evidence okay it has no documentary evidence a uh, scope it has a larger scope as compared to non verbal the scope of non verbal is limited media we can use verbal communication in the form of meeting video telephone calls video conference interview face to face uh, communication whereas non verbal it is in the form of facial expression body language gestures silence okay uh, etc consistency it is more consistent in nature whereas non verbal lacks consistency uh, which, which is one of the major feature of non verb non verbal communication okay so yes but definitely you do not get so straight questions on verbal and non verbal they give you with the help of different examples okay uh indu i have not seen what you have uh, written i'll just come to it later okay now uh when we talk about intercultural communication now see uh, in intercultural communication this type of examples you uh, this type of question you always get with the help of examples so intercultural communication refers to the communication between people for from two different cultures intercultural communication is symbolic it is interpretive it is transactional a uh, contextual process in which people from different cultures create shared meanings now when we talk about uh, yes uh, junet uh, when you talk about non verbal communication has more effect that is as per dr albert's theory which i have brought it okay but when you are distinguishing it okay in the form of distinguish verbal will have more importance why because it is more in formal nature but as per dr albert's theory non verbal you have a different set of question for that also i understood in what form you are telling i have a slide for that i'll show you okay we have we will discuss it in this lecture itself fine but now when you are talking about from a uh, business point of view or from uh, evidence point of view definitely non verbal communication will not have uh, effect as compared to verbal is it clear okay now when it is expression format okay there are pre in previous year question papers also because of this there are two three books i mean to say when i was taking mcq also that time also students got confused and in that that question which is is an intention what you said fine so yes so when we talk about intercultural communication intercultural communication questions were given you know again with teaching aptitude so like for example difference uh, between the uh, students so the in previous year you have the question but there is no direct question on intercultural communication the questions are in in the form of you know in the form of different uh, it is attached with a teaching aptitude so we will see that question so i'll tell you that this question is based on intercultural communication fine now yes now coming to non verbal communication the set of questions like for example the physical aspects of non verbal communication now this is how you get the questions i have attached i mean to say i have written different ways what exactly it indi indicates so we'll go through it two three slides i have kept for it so that you understand you have got this questions in the form of match the following you have got this questions as a simple mcq i mean simple uh, question also as the following also you have got so you should know what exactly what is term what physical aspect is uh, given a proper terminology let's see one by one so when we talk about kinesthetics that is body language which indicates you know different actions like for example eye movement winking facial expression gestures okay that comes as a part of your non verbal communication proxemies that is proximity is use of space okay use of space a bit uh, use of space when you even communicate the the regular or normal distance between two people aptus that is touch oculus that is eye movement chronics that is waste of time or waiting pausing uh, olfactors that is smell 
vocalis that is tone of voice should should this is little bit factual in this you have to be little clear with this okay sound symbols now sound symbols you have not i mean to say grunting so they may give you the symbols which indicates that they are non verbal form of communication silence to pause to wait okay that is again a, a gesture of non verbal communication okay posture yes position of the body now on posture already there is a question in previous year question paper uh, your the teacher's posture again this was attached with teaching aptitude teacher's posture in the classroom also indicates what i mean to say there was a question on this adornment that is you know your dressing okay that indicates how loud how decent you know you are dressing etiquettes are and locomotion that is your walking running staggering lip, lip, limping so here these are the words okay i have i have made a next slide also you should be because there are questions which are given with this physical aspects and you have to recognize which type of communication it is so i have made it a uh, in straight format also where we have seen questions in the previous year question paper so when we talk about body postures gestures or face language expression you can take facial expressions it is kinesthetic eye contact blinking oculus touch that is haptis personal space that is proxemies now personal space now please remember here you can get personal space it means like for example uh, you know there is an ideal distance between when two people sit two people stand when you are talking with someone okay there has to be an ideal distance so that distance is called as personal space element that is called as proxemies para language and voice vocalis time element that is chromics physical environment and personal appearance so here this basically i have written separately because from this the questions were seen now yes so like for example coming to uh, types of communication so when we talk about types of communication we did verbal communication we did non verbal communication written communication in the form of mail reporting bullet uh, bulletins letter manual telegram listening communication which happens with an active listening we have done yesterday skills very well visual communication in the form of image infographic video visual presentation now there was one of the theory that was given by dr albert okay now this theory regarding to this theory or with respect to this theory elements of personal communication wherein as as per this theory it is a 73855 rule now that the theory talks about yes mohammed ya I'll, i'll come to your doubt i'll just do, give me one minute okay so let me first complete this theory now the theory talks about what the theory talks about the impact of the communication so when we talk about spoken words it has 7% okay when we talk about voice or tone it has you know 38 percent whereas your 55 percent of the uh, communication is with the help of your body language that constitutes your non-verbal communication so it is concluded that the tone of voice is stronger indicator of emotion than the actual meaning of words okay and if you take as an whole everything what is more of importance is the non-verbal communication so dr albert has proved that non verbal communication has more impact than the verbal communication is it clear now yes now uh, here also voice and tone mohammed see that is when we use the word para language no it means the communication you can tell it as communication which takes uh, with the help of speech speech that is a speech the speed the uh, gesture means the noise okay that is nothing but it is called as what it is called as para uh, you call it as para language or para communication that is how it is it uh, recognized is it clear okay and with this theory also i have told you how it is uh, non verbal communication is proved as um, i mean to say has more impact with the re reference to body language as uh, compared to the spoken words is it clear okay fine i hope it is very clear with uh, everyone yes now uh, there are two things which i have added up one if you remember there in effective communication the last part was classroom communication now again this classroom communication they mix up with teaching aptitude question and there is one question on this also and in the next slide also so i'll just first take this so classroom communication is a basis of social identity 
teaching social act is a social activity as it involves both teacher and student in order to learn direct communication allows immediate feedback which definitely com completes the cycle of communication also teacher inculcates proper value such as uh, economic values cultural value social value or you can even say the overall development but for that what type of behavior or what are the similar word attach okay so what type of ability a teacher should indicate in the classroom there is there was one question based on this question only i have taken this uh, terms so empathetic behavior sympathetic behavior apathy behavior and antipathy behavior so there was one previous year question where all those behaviors were listed so teacher is supposed to reflect which type of behavior in the classroom so it is empathetic behavior now why so empathetic behavior is nothing but a behavior or a ability of the teacher to understand and share feelings of another so here it means students so when we talk about so this 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 is two three times this previous in previous year i could see this question so please because during the exam times you again get little bit confused oh, what is so many apathies so please remember empathetic is not something else it is just an ability of understanding the feelings according to the you know to whom you are communicating so many a times it uh, yes deepa i am explaining empathy it means a feeling of understanding like for example no normally what happens you know suppose we are the teachers okay and when the students come up with a reason we always say that okay these are your excuses and sometimes what happens you know knowingly or unknowingly see i am not telling that we are also doing it purposely uh, you know sometimes we fail to realize you know the student is speaking truth or the student really needs us and he needs us or he needs a the ability to understand and sometimes we you know we ignore that but that can create a wrong impression on the mind of student and that bonding or affection will never build so that type of behavior when we uh, come up with that is called as empathetic behavior Now, empathetic behavior does not tell that you have to be lenient you have to be soft soft spoken it is just talking about you have to have the ability to understand your student that's all that is called as empathetic behavior we have to put ourselves in the place of students and understand them ma'am no no it's not that you have to not understand uh, you do not have to place yourself in them but you have to understand that whenever they are speaking to what level no no to what level are they speaking see sometimes you know it is very this this is very this is about the ability sometimes a student makes so much innocent face no that you will show your empathetic ability which is actually not required because a student is lying so you need to differentiate between the true feelings and when the student is making misuse of your behavior that you have to differentiate and that type of be ability is called as empathetic ability okay now sympathetic it means pity i mean to say which we should not show any time okay do it's like some we are doing favor on someone okay so we should not like for example you know we 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 are uh, we feel pity we feel sympathetic and we try to do something don't do don't in, in fact for students you should never do something with sympathetic behavior okay apathy it means lack of interest or enthusiasm or concern so even the teacher should not reflect this behavior that is it tells that teacher is least bothered that is if i'm using the word teacher is least bothered so in communication i can tell that teacher is having apathetic behavior it means teacher is not concerned at all what is happening like i'll give you one example sometimes you know what happens there are uh, 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 students you know who sit at the last benches you know maybe because of lack of space or maybe the height issues and all those things but some teachers do not take an effort uh, to go to the last and you know see what is happening so teacher is having lack of interest so that is called as apathetic behavior and antipathy it means deep seated feeling it's like a dislike it's like a, it's you know you just are uh, that that gives little bit of negative feeling anti it is anti so you know negative feeling that i am not concerned i sometimes it happens your frustration level you may be overpacked or overburdened so you you show this type of behavior which a teacher should never show so out of all this behavior teacher should only try to show empathetic behavior and empathetic behavior there is no soft corner there is no leniency only teacher should try her level or his level best 
the to understand the student okay and in this also the teacher should try to find out who is actually speaking the truth and who can misuse the uh, situation fine so this is how it ends i think this is the last thing yes this is the last slide which we have for the day so effective communication our second point is also done maybe tomorrow we will start with barriers of communication and we will take more two or three models okay models i have completed only two today one is aristotle model and one is your uh, laswell's model okay so yes uh, global online university also has paper two provision that is for management commerce and economics uh, you can go and check out global online app also at google play store you can download and you can find you know uh, we i mean to say app has also structurized the things very well very video lectures notes in the form of pdf previous year question papers that is five years question papers will be given for practice mock revision after the syllabus completion will be taken fees for management economics and commerce is uh, is 5000 but if you are taking exclusively paper 2 you will get paper 1 free in this contact details are given if you want anything you can please get in touch with the contact person and yes if anyone we also provide assistance for gujarat set west bengal set k set and ap set in the form of full syllabus test uh, pdf solution with answers notes of all the units as well as 2500 mcqs and video lectures so you can avail the same whatsapp number are given thank you very much everyone and uh, see you tomorrow so very soon A reading um yes junet don't worry reading comprehension is also lined up and uh, actually i have told you yesterday only if you want to get five on five uh, from today itself you have to start with your uh, one comprehension daily and you have to learn, read it on the screen not in the book you have to read it on the screen you don't in, in fact you will be expert and you will uh, secure five out of five in i mean to say Uh, full marks in your comprehension so if you follow this strategy you will definitely you don't have to follow any other strategy if you follow strategy one one comprehension every day that is the best strategy uh an annapurna i have uh, that's in my if you see in every lecture no my heading comes with uh, the sub topic okay that is like for example today as i said i am taking effective communication and i am taking the topic of uh, models of communication so every slide my indicates what topic i am taking sub topic i mean but still from tomorrow onwards i'll keep on repeating to to prepare the notes okay thank you everyone see you tomorrow sharp at 9 okay Thank you.